Well, good morning and thanks for waking up with us today. It's 630 on your Sunday, July 2nd. I'm Rachel Gartner and you can see behind me we've got blue skies this morning. Storm Track 3's Garrett Hamilton is going to talk to us. Now, Garrett, you're joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Rachel. <laughs> and yes, there are clear skies right now and right. thankfully we are expecting some more seasonable temperatures for the remainder Good. of the day. I'm glad to hear that. It is going to be very nice today with highs around 90 and maybe a few spots may hang on to their upper 80s, but overall temperatures are going to be around 90 for most of us, which is again going to be very, which is going to be normal for this time of year. It's only two degrees warmer than what we're supposed to have. So the sun did rise this morning at 5.36 a.m. and we will, the sun will set at 8.23 p.m. rather, and we will and then we will also are tracking the potential for strong to severe thunderstorms this afternoon and tonight. But right now the radar is clear as of this morning with only a few lingering showers down here in, towards Mayfield. And it looks like that one cell near Mayfield has moved in on towards Benton and Land of the Lakes and has fortunately dissipated. And again, we will see those storms redevelop this afternoon with the threats of strong damaging winds and large hail being the primary threats. But again, most of us are clear for this morning. I'll break down hour by hour when we could see that in my full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks a lot, Garrett. Well, you saw on that radar those storms pushing out of our region, but they were on top of us yesterday. We received numerous damage reports over the last 12 hours. Let's go ahead and take a look at what some people experienced across our region yesterday. Now, winds blew off most of the roof on this historical landmark down in Chester. These are pictures of Mary's River Covered Bridge. It was built in 1854 and it was used for traffic until 1930. That's when the state bought it in 1936 to preserve it as a landmark and a picnic area. It was named to the National Register of Historic Places in 1974, and hopefully they'll be able to make those repairs. And it was a rough go for campers in Grand Rivers, Kentucky, when that storm rolled into their area at about 7 o'clock last night. Law enforcement in Grand Rivers reported thunderstorm and wind damage, destroying numerous campers and downing trees. Now, witnesses in the area did report seeing a funnel cloud and several trees down across the lake in Marshall County near Moores. That's south of Cambridge Shores over in Marshall County. Now, nearby trees and power lines also reported down. That's according to Kentucky Transportation Cabinet District 1. Trees and power lines were down in the lower bottoms near Hickman and Fulton County. Most block spots are now clear and they were reporting trees and down power lines. And of course, drivers always encouraged to avoid those damaged areas to allow emergency crews in and out and to get that work done. We're about to hear some sound. It'll be any second. They're hitting our car. It's everywhere. Now you're taking a look at the hail that came down yesterday afternoon. This video was taken by Jer Jerry Learned in Tamaroa in Perry County. Learned reported golf ball size hail at their home. And this is what the hail looks like up close. This was also sent to us from a couple of viewers in Tamaroa. Now you can see some of those unique shapes that were formed, but that hail of course can also be damaging. Now, Harrisburg residents, they should be in power this morning. That's after spotty electricity last night. The Harrisburg Fire Department posted on social media that interruptions took place last night due to a substation going down. They asked residents not to call 911 about that specific power outage. They didn't want to overwhelm the 911 system. And speaking of transformers, they are in short supply and high demand. The American Public Power Association says it could take a year to replace one. Only a handful of U.S. manufacturers build some of those transformer parts, and the rest come from overseas. Well, some prices jumped as much as 70 percent, according to the National Association of Home Builders. Some manufacturers stopped taking orders altogether. Now people are renting and refurbishing old ones. Rather than, uh, you know, a normal uh, useful life of, you know, 20 years, we see them bringing them back in, bringing them to manufacturers and asking them to refurbish them in order to get more useful life out of them while they're waiting for the supply chain constraint to ideally abate. And hurricane season, of course, could worsen this shortage. NOAA is predicting 12 to 17 named storms this season, and that's about 30 percent above normal storm activity. Experts say three or more storms could dwindle the available transformer supply. 